Hi, welcome back my Vice Astrology Tribe, Cosmic Insight Astrology. My name is Christina. If you have a Taurus rising, Taurus sun or Taurus moon, this is your November 2022 astrology forecast. All right, let's see what kind of challenges you will need to face or what kind of opportunities you will have. So the sky is very busy and actually it's going to emphasize your first and seventh house because you are being Taurus. So the axis, the nodes axis is in Taurus and Scorpio. And that's why you're going to be under magnifying glass until 2023, July 17th. So let's see what's going on. On the first, for you guys, actually on the second, you're going to have Venus uh, in Scorpio, which is actually opposing either your mo uh, moon or uh, sun or, um, or your ascendant, uh, going to oppose North Node. North Node is... Um, um, very positive and in your first house it could be actually you going to approach a different way of living you're going to actually become someone different and um, that is like um, you are coming out uh, from a cocoon and you're going to become a butterfly and it's going to be a significant change in your appearance so you might going to change the whole entire closet you might going to change your hairstyle you might going to change your whole personality the way you pretend the way you are presenting yourself to others and then venus actually in the uh, seventh house it could represent like you know somebody might not see your beauty or or someone who is close to you, uh, you who is dear to your heart it could be your significant other it could be actually your maybe your business partner and venus in scorpio and venus rules you taurus but in Scorpio, it could be debilitated. And, you know, so um, uh, it can represent like maybe your significant other see you only beautiful or, or see the sexual charisma, but doesn't see the way you, you grew up, doesn't see, you know, the way you went through of pain and went through of change and you became an other person, you have different kind of values right now, and they don't see that. Okay, so let's go actually to November 8th. And November 8th, we are having a total lunar eclipse in your sign, and that is going to be 16 degrees, um, and it's going to conjunct with Uranus, and it's going to square with Saturn, and it's going to conjunct also North Node, but going to oppose Mercury. So Mercury is communication. You know, it could represent some kind of issue, some kind of uh, perhaps your significant other being secretive. You see, Scorpio being secretive, and you're going to have some kind of communication issue. Total lunar eclipse usually representing completion ending, but it's usually painful, okay? So in the first house, it could be like, you know, I'm not that little girl anymore, and, and, uh, and that's it. I'm done with the way I've been before, and I served everyone in this family or, or my, my partner, and right now I want to live my life differently. Um, so that's why it could represent like maybe your business partner having some secrets or or um, maybe your your significant other having some um, secrets and hiding something from you. And on the eight also be going to have a Saturn square with this uh, uh, lunar eclipse and you know it's it's difficult look at that t square between the moon saturn and the sun uh, saturn is the lord of karma it is um, mortality it is uh, uh, restriction as well but you know it's also endurance and ambition and in your 10th house of career uh, it is reality check as well, you know, like, does this career serve me or should I change? Because somehow I was working on it, I built it, I built it, I built it, it could be a non-profit, but somehow it doesn't approve as much as I want to. 
So is it my way? This is my way to life. This is my higher purpose. So that is a reality checking over here. And, uh, you know, it could be also emotional. I never like Saturn and Moon uh, hard uh, aspects because it could indicate some kind of um, uh, deep challenges. And uh, first and 10th house could represent like, you know, like, uh, for example, you're going to have some kind of issue with your body. Why? Because first house is your body. So Saturn, it could be something with break. So, so an issue like, uh, or, or your structure, uh, it could be some kind of backache, some kind of physical issue, teeth ache or anything like that. And you're not going to be capable to present yourself out in the public. You're not going to be, uh, be able to be on the stage. Or maybe you emotionally drained and you are tired. It could also signify some kind of depression as well. So that's why I don't like that aspect at all. All right, and then we're going to have actually with North Node. So North Node is uh, the head of the dragon. And, you know, it is a different approach to yourself. It is the different way you're going to pretend for the public with this moon. Moon is the public. So you're going to become really um, like nobody going to recognize you. You're going to raise some eyebrow like the change is going to be so rapid and so significant in your life. It could be like some of you are gay, but hidden in the closet and you're going to come out during this full month. So you ending the, uh, you are not hiding anymore. You're not uh, capable to hide anymore and you are coming out from the closet. It's also actually trying with Ceres. Ceres over here is in Virgo in your fifth house. Fifth house is... Um, joy and and children and investment as well you know prices so Ceres over there could be it's it's the asteroid of wisdom so you know what but also could signify loss as well it could be just like mm, perhaps i going to go with wisdom right though no because it's a trine so it could be like uh it's going to help you so maybe your children are going to be very understanding and accepting your change so perhaps uh, you are in a marriage and maybe you are gay or lesbian and you are coming out right now and of course it's going to have a communication difficulties and any kind of difficulties with your partner but your children are more understanding its situation so some of you of course it's not all tauruses which is more than a billion on this earth, but you know, some of you could have that uh, some kind of situation. And pretty much, I also wanted to talk about Mars and Neptune square all, um, all um, uh, month long and all November. And, you know, Neptune is confusion. And um, actually, it could be confusion with media, TV and lies, because Neptune also representing lies. And because Mars went in retrograde in Gemini, Gemini, so it could be media. And it is in your 11th house and in your second house. Second house is your values and finances. 11th house is your social circle. Maybe a friend is lying to you. Maybe they, they uh, lent man, borrowed money from you and they said they need it because of otherwise they couldn't survive or need it for surgeries, Neptune, or something like that. Uh, some kind of... Um, hardship neptune could represent hardship and the 11th house is your friend and you know they lie to you and you are finding out and it's going to give some conflict with that friend so if you can please don't give money to anyone right now because it's going to you can lose a friend uh, during this square because of somebody's lying you can be very argumentative your values are changing and your friendship zone values are are either in denial or, you know, they, they might be confused or, they, you know, no, many times it could represent, it is like, um, like a foggy issue here and they don't see the truth and you're going to become angry and it's going to become a conflict between you guys. Um, also, uh, that is not only hopes and wishes, it is investment as well. And here the second house is your, your money. So it could represent you invested in something what is inflating right now, and you're going to get very upset about that. 
And then I want to move forward. We're going to have some kind of good aspect when actually the sun in Scorpio going to trine with Neptune over here. So yes, it is like Pisces and Scorpio, 7th house and 11th house. That definitely could be something with friendship. And it could be something like maybe uh, your uh, significant other actually um, supporting your friendship zone. So you might go into to have some kind of new friends in and it could be spiritual and then your significant other going to be happy about you are making new friends it's also going to have when sun and pluto going to sextile sun and pluto pluto is in your ninth house that is your um foreign affairs and it could be also something with high education so you're going through a transformation maybe you are getting your master's pluto when direct over here so right now you can get your passport you can go for that long distance traveling and you know your significant other or your business partner buying a trip for you and it could be also anything else like yeah i'm getting my passport i'm getting my master's i'm getting my doctorate um you know, definitely I will be seen. I'm getting back my power as well. On November 16th, Venus going to Sagittarius for you in the eighth house. Eighth house is money. Uh, Venus is also money. So it's a freedom. It's ki kind of like you paying off your debts, Tauruses. You're going to get that mortgage. You're going to get that student loan forgiveness or PPP loan or anywhere you are listening if you are not located in the U.S., but some kind of loan forgiveness could happen here or some kind of inheritance. Finally, it's coming in and it's going to liberate you. You are getting rid of that which is liberating you. On the 17th, my, my, uh, Mercury going to join Venus in your eighth house. Mercury is sales. Mercury is signing contracts. In the eighth house, you might going to get that uh, mortgage, what you didn't get before. So, you know, it's definitely very good. And actually on the 21st, you're going to have Venus and uh, Mercury conjunct over here. So, you know, what that is could be a really good communication. It is definitely meaning for you guys, some kind of, I'm going to get the loan and the funds to, to renovate my house, to rebuild my something in my life and to make my life better and richer because eight house is really other people's money. It's rich. So, so definitely it could make my life easier with the money that I have with the contract that I have. And then on the 20th, Vesta, the asteroid of wisdom is going to Pisces from Aquarius in your 11th house. So the eternal flame in the 11th house of hopes and wishes. So Vesta is really good for investment. So you might want to look for investment. You might want to get some kind of tangible things. But I'm telling you, because if inflation is coming, and especially with the eclipse, and you are really affected because you are Taurus, so might want to get some kind of tangible things that you like, Taurus like tangible, but something in the Pisces alarm. So it could be oil or it could be something with marine biology or it could be something with uh, like um, um, you invest maybe in holistic healing or drugs or, or psychedelics or something like that. Vesta could be really good here. On the 22nd, Sun is going to go to Sagittarius, all right, in your eighth house again. It's lighting up your eighth house. So it is something about mortgage, other people's money, pregnancies, and all the taboo, sex, death, inheritances. It's lighting up that house, but whatever is happening, it's liberating you. So in some cases, it could be like some of you going to go through an abortion and it's liberating you, right? Some of you going to have the baby pregnancy and have have the baby, it could represent C-section. So it could be like, all right, so it's liberating me because I don't have to suffer as much as I thought before. I'm going to go with the surgery and schedule a, a C-section or something like that. So definitely sun in here in the eighth house is liberation, financial um, liberation, yeah. Like, like you're not going to have that burden, financial burden anymore. I feel like you can breathe again. Okay. And then I also wanted to mention the new moon on November 23rd. So new moon going to happen November 23rd in 
actually um, one degree of um, Sagittarius. One degree of Sagittarius, and actually it's going to trine Jupiter and it's going to square with Vesta. Okay, so the moon is new beginning, right? When the, the, when the sky is really uh, dark. Uh, so let me see, I'm not going with a wig, but let's go by the day here. I didn't, okay. So it's going to happen over here. And uh, when, the, uh, when the moon and the sun is merging in heaven, so that is also, again, an eighth house matter. It is definitely paying off debts for you. It's definitely debt relief, the forgiveness, some kind of forgiveness, inheritance. And, uh, you know, with Jupiter, the pen of growth and, and abundance, and, and it's going to actually trine with it. Jupiter is already going to be in Pisces, retrogating back to Pisces 28 degree, but it's still within orb. So it is giving you an amazing flavor from, for example, my social circle is going to, to um, support me, or I'm, I'm going to win a court case, and the court case, that's why I'm getting a big amount of money. So probably some of you are winning, uh, suit somebody, and, and you are winning the case. It could be also some kind of, uh, um, you had to go to court because of your inheritance. Somebody wanted to take something away from you, but rightfully was yours. So yeah. That is a positive aspect here. Square with this Vesta, not so much because Vesta is in the beginning. Well, you know, Vesta is investment. So it could be like careful if you get a big amount of money, you are winning the case and you want to invest it right away without any thinking because there you, you can uh, actually experience some kind of loss. And then I wanted to tell you guys on the 23rd or so, Jupiter is going direct, stations direct very, very good news in your 11th house hopes and wishes. And it is also luck, luck as the Jupiter itself, it's like, it rules Pisces. So you might experience some kind of amazing luck. And you know, Jupiter and Neptune, it's not within degrees, but within orbs there, it's going to conjunct again. So, you know, like, okay, so what's gonna happen here? So, uh, it's getting closer to each other so again, uh, and it means miracle, miracle in your 11th house matter, miracle in courthouse, in court system, adoption, you know, miracle in, in you win something. It could be like a huge amount of win winning or getting a big payout from your job, from your career. All right, and then I wanted to tell you also, uh, Pallas Athene is the planet of wisdom, is going to ret station retrogate on November 30. So November 30, it's going to station. Oh, I'm going by the, I didn't want to go by this by week. So here it is. It's going to station retrogate in cancer. Cancer for you in your third house of communication, siblings, neighborhood, palasatine, the wisdom, when it's going to go retrogate, all right, careful, like not to be wise in your neighborhood. You know, like you are creating some kind of uh, issue in your neighborhood or with your sibling or, or with your, perhaps they need to to get some advice and you are giving advice but this time you are did you didn't really give uh, uh, gave a, a wise advice for your loved ones all right guys so that is your um 2022 november horoscope please check out my website www.urbanvitch.org and subscribe like and share and comment please Thank you so much for listening. See you in December. Bye.